A growing number of refugees have found themselves stuck in legal limbo, granted protection in Australia only to be black banned by ASIO for posing a security risk. There are now several dozen in indefinite detention with no right of appeal against their negative security assessments and seemingly no hope of release. And they include six children whose parents have been deemed a security risk. Their plight has prompted a new push in the federal parliament to curb ASIO's powers. Hayden Cooper reports. It's the third anniversary of the end of Sri Lanka's long and bloody civil war and Australia's Tamil community gathers to remember its dead. Routed in their homeland by the Sri Lankan military, the ranks of Tamils in Australia have been growing ever since as more and more seek out a new life. But for a handful, the move has proved disastrous. This is the voice of a Tamil refugee speaking from inside Sydney's Villawood Detention Centre. He's allowed 7.30 to use his photograph, but he wants to be known only by his nickname, Bonus. I'm extremely depressed and I'm also having a lot of health issues. For two months I've been hearing noises in my ear. It's like a ringing noise and in the past few days I've been hearing voices and I'm having hallucinations. He and 50 others are stuck. Most are Sri Lankan. They've been given refugee status but they can't be released because Australia's intelligence agency considers them a security threat. There are a lot of Sri Lankans who have the negative assessment. And Tamil activist Sara Nathan visits the group regularly. So it is really sad that we're keeping somebody who has not committed any crime on suspicion that he might commit a crime. We're keeping him in detention for three years. Three years is a very long time out of a young lad's life. ASIO, which soon moves to its new complex in Canberra, is as secretive as ever. It doesn't provide reasons for its rulings. And for non-citizens, there's no right of appeal against the merits of a decision. The Tamil community speculates that the adverse assessments relate to possible links with the Tamil Tigers. The Tamil Tigers uh, uh, were a rebel group, they were freedom fighters and they were not banned as terrorists in, uh, in Australia, so I don't know what the issue is. Naromi de Souza is now an Australian citizen, but 20 years ago, at just 17, she ran away from home to join the Tamil Tigers. And this is a sort of training camp that we had. After fighting for eight months, she'd had enough. When I came here, I applied for um, asylum, political asylum. And um, during the interview, I told them the whole story. Um, they, they know everything about me and what I had done in the past. And yet I was given a second chance in this country, uh, which I'm really grateful for because look at me today. You know, for 20 years ago, I was a different person. I had just come through the trauma of war. And now um, I was able to put that behind. I've got myself an education and job, you know, traveled, mortgage, kids, that sort of thing. And um, I couldn't have done all of that if Australia hadn't been generous in understanding that someone who fled the violence wasn't going to perpetuate it in this country. Naromi de Souza decided to speak out after learning that the group of refugees stranded in detention includes women and children. That's what I, I think about these people. For them, the trauma is ongoing. So what's the academic view of the Tamil Tigers, or LTTE? On the whole, Professor Clive Williams doesn't believe they're a threat to Australia. You know, many Tamils were involved in some way or other with the LTTE. Now, it might be different if, if someone was involved in a hit squad, for example, and was responsible for a number of murders or for injuring people. But if the person had been simply a fellow traveller for the LTTE, I can't really see a reason for giving a negative assessment. But others can. Shanaka Jayasekara is a Sinhalese Sri Lankan and lectures on terrorism support networks. He says the Tamil Tigers remain active internationally and some members have weapons experience that could pose a threat to Australia's security. IEDs, improvised explosive devices, the use of heavy weaponry, uh, these are skills uh, that may and can have a 
adverse impact on Australia. For the refugee known as Bonus, his detention has now lasted three years and he says he doesn't know why ASIO has ruled against him. I have no idea and they haven't given me a reason. None of my family members are in the LTTE. I didn't have direct or indirect contact with the LTTE. This week will herald a new attempt to deal with the issue in Parliament and boost the rights of refugees. The Greens will move a private member's bill to grant non-citizens a right of review by the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, entitle asylum seekers to a statement of reasons for the ASIO decision, hold an ASIO review every six months of detention and have a special advocate appointed to assist in sensitive cases. How can it be that a child, a single mother, a widow, a young a teenager uh, is facing indefinite detention uh, practically for the rest of their lives and no one can explain what they have done? Stronger review powers were also called for by a parliamentary inquiry earlier this year. The Attorney-General is yet to respond. For its part, ASIO maintains it can't provide confidential details to visa applicants because it would reveal ASIO methods. And as for the detention dilemma, the government's under pressure to find an alternative. It may be possible, for example, if there's a degree of uncertainty about a case where, where the person might be releasable into the community under some form of control order, you know, that, uh, that they're monitored more closely or they have to report into a police station every so often, that sort of thing. The Tamil community is vowing to keep the pressure on until the indefinite detention of the 51 adults and six children ends. Hayden Cooper reporting.